So I'm going to talk about an emerging area, which is sort of the engineering of the web. And there's an expression in English, the elephant in the room, where we mean something that is very large, very important, and no one wants to talk about. And I'm going to argue that in academia, the elephant in the room has been the World Wide Web. It has changed so much, and yet we know very little about it, and we need to learn how to engineer this thing. The web has changed all of our lives in 20 years since it was first conceptualized by a physicist working at CERN. The web has gotten to where it has 1.2 billion users. That's 21% of humanity. It has changed the way we work, the way we play, etc. At a technical level, most people don't realize that the web has evolved significantly from the early days of how a browser worked to where the web is now how many information applications are developed. So understanding issues like privacy, security, accessibility will change how many, many applications work. We also have to think about the social impacts of the web. Uh, the Web 2.0 technologies we've all come to love or hate, depending whether you're a digital native or a digital alien, as the terms are used, uh, have changed publication as being threatened by the blogosphere. Four billion minutes a day are spent on uh, Facebook alone. That's 7,000 human years in that one site. We've also learned something about data which is that the product of people interacting with data lets us do prediction, lets us attack problems in new ways. This is one of my favorite examples. The astronomers have a problem. They're doing a sky survey, and they have found many, many new galaxies, and they want to get them classified. And writing a computer program to classify galaxies is very hard. So they put out on the web an application where you can volunteer a little bit of your time to look at these things and change it. Hundreds of millions of galaxies have been uh, categorized by tens of thousands of volunteers. Big science, how do we exploit that? How can we make things work? How can we bring climate change and things like that to where we can attack it through this lots and lots of people giving us a little bit of time? How can we link all that kind of data together? One of the big innovations going on in the web now is a new generation of web technologies that are really related to data. They're aimed at pulling data sets together, going beyond the current notion of a single database as where data lives, and into a world where data will flow between applications and different ways. Ways. And a lot of what that's about is linking different kinds of data. Uh, one of the factoids I learned on my last trip to China was that the Great Wall was not a single engineering project. It was many, many walls that eventually were connected up. And the web grew that same way. And one of our questions is how do we exploit that? How do we understand that? This is some work going on to take many, many data sets that, agree, that, that are already there and public, make them accessible on the web in web shareable forms. The life scientists have taken the lead in realizing that by accessing what information about where people live and what they do and how, how it's discussed, not just, not just technical publication, things can be pulled together in interesting ways. This is a demo where five different data sets about uh, environment, and terrain and where people live have been thrown together and thrown into a visualization against a Google map. One of my undergraduates wrote that application in less than an hour. All that stuff's there once you can pull the information. And many, many new companies are starting to form around this nexus of data meets social meets the web. How do we pull all that together? How do we start seeing how we exploit these things, how we build these things, and how we predict the social impacts of new technologies? Finally, I want to say a big thing happening on the web, of course, is that it's moving off the web the way we think of it. More and more people have these than have computers. There are three billion cell phones to approximately a billion computers. When you're using the web on your phone, you don't want to do a Google search. You don't want to type in a lot. You want somehow the information to find you, to be where you want. So how do we engineer not just the phone, but the information space so that we can exploit it, use it, and have it reach us wherever we are in this huge information network we call the future of the World Wide Web?